Good afternoon, Cross Timbers. Today is Wednesday, February 1st, 2017. I am Sydney Burns. And I'm Latricia Powell. On today's show, we mourn the loss of a Tarleton student. And we get the inside story of a bank teller who stole over $1 million. Plus your daily weather report and your weekend sports reports. These stories plus more are coming up next on Texan TV. In campus news, senior nursing major J.C. Smather from Lano, Texas, died last night. The cause of her death has not been confirmed, but according to Smather's Facebook friends, it was a gas leak in her Stephenville home. A campus-wide email was sent this morning confirming Smather's death. Vice President of Student Affairs Dr. Laura Bourne encouraged those who are grieving to contact the Student Counseling Center. Service time for Smather have not yet been released, but the university will provide the information when it becomes available. And in other campus news, Tarleton celebrated the grand opening of the new Agriculture mach Field Machinery and Fabrication Laboratory on Friday with a ribbon cutting and tours. This new $3.8 million facility allows all of the mechanics programs to be under the same roof for the first time since 1959. Located on the Tarleton farm, the facility includes three laboratories as well as classrooms, a computer lab, and events kitchens and more. In local news, according to The Flash today, the investigation into the Erath County Sheriff's Department has been sent to the Attorney General Office of Kent Paxton, where the information from the investigation will be further processed. An initial investigation was done by the Texas Commission of Law Enforcement, or TCOL. The, TCOL main, the TCOL's main purpose is to investigate any complaints, illegal acts, or dishonest behavior that may have been committed by any law enforcement agent or peace officer in the state of Texas. The original TCOL investigation was initiated by the late Sheriff John Tommy Bryant. Bryant self-reported when he found out that a fellow deputy had taken an exam under his name. Sergeant Stan Roper from the TCOL told The Flash that his team's investigation was complete and any criminal case would be dealt with by the Attorney General's office. Roper denied any further comments because the case is still ongoing. And now today's Texas national and international news from the Associated Press. In state news, a former bank supervisor pleaded guilty Tuesday to falsifying records in order to conceal a $1.25 million theft from her employer, the U.S. Attorney's Office. 42-year-old Jill Marie Myers was employed as the teller supervisor with the First National Bank in Edinburgh, Texas, where she was, be where she was responsible for verifying the amounts of U.S. currency maintained by the bank in its various cash vaults and entering those amounts at the end of each day into the general ledger of the bank. An investigation into these records revealed that from approximately June 2004 until June 2014, currency belonging to the bank began to disappear from the vault at an average of $10,000 per month. Myers admitted that she created fraudulent entries in bank records in order to conceal theft of $1.25 million. The scheme was uncovered in June 2014 after Plains Capital Bank acquired First National Bank. Myers faces up to 30 years in federal prison and a possible $1 million fine. She has also agreed to pay restitution. In national news, yesterday in Brownsville, 31-year-old brother patrol agent Joel Luna was acquitted by a South Texas jury of the most serious charges in 2015. The jury convicted Luna of aiding organized crime in a drug-related case that left a man decapitated. Prosecutors believe Luna used his position to help a Mexican cartel move illegal weapons and ammunition south of the border and move drugs to the north. A Cameron County jury found Luna guilty of two counts of engaging in organized crime activity. Luna will face up to 99-year prison term. His brother, 26-year-old Eduardo Luna, was con convicted of capital murder and two counts of engaging in organized criminal activity and sentenced to mandatory life in prison without parole. On the screen, you can see a photo of the Luna brothers, including Border Patrol agent Joel in the center, the oldest brother, Fernando, on the right, who struck a deal with prosecutors last year but had the most serious charges against him dropped, and the youngest brother, Eduardo, on the left. In international news, Harvard Medical School professor Dr. Thomas Michael expressed his concerns about the effects from the recent executive order by President Trump. This order bans travelers from seven Muslim countries, and Dr. Michael worries that because of this ban, many get people from other countries who come to the U.S. to pursue their careers will look elsewhere to continue their studies. Dr. Michael, along with many other universities across the nation, worry the U.S. will lose its competitive edge and role as a world leader in innovation. 
Many researchers also begin to feel nervous about whether or not they can feel safe with a J-1 visa. Let's take a look at the Associated Press for more information. So I'm very concerned that these talented young people who for generations have come to this country to pursue science, to pursue their careers, whether they're seeking opportunity or fleeing persecution, this is where people have come. And now they're looking at this country. They're looking at what our ruler says. And they're saying, why should I go there? I can go to China, where there's a much larger investment uh, in biomedical and other research and uh, a an more accepting policy towards people coming from other countries. China, Singapore, Germany has a huge science infrastructure and a long history of discovery. Uh, the United States is going to lose its competitive edge. It's also something that's really hurt the morale of, of other members of my lab. Uh, most of uh, the other folks in my lab are either themselves immigrants uh, or are J-1 visa holders. Um, about half the folks in my labs are, lab is a, uh, about half the folks in my lab are J-1 visa holders. So while none of them are from those seven countries, um, they're worried about whether or not this program will be expanded, uh, and it's caused them to worry about you know how secure they, they can feel on a J-1 visa. America exists in the world. That to be globally competitive, one needs to be globally engaged, and one needs to be globally responsible. And the fact that this is now resulting in an alienation and estrangement of uh, traditional allies and friends, the fact that this is turning away the best and the brightest who want to come here, who see this as a land of opportunity, we are losing that edge. And I think that America, under the current direction being promulgated by our ruler, is headed in the wrong direction. America will become less great as a consequence of these policies. I'm not a politician, I'm a scientist. In the meantime, many academics overseas are calling for a boycott of conferences in the United States. And for more of today's national and international news, we turn to the AP News Minute. This is AP News Minute. U.S. Supreme Court nominee Neil Gorsuch is set to visit Capitol Hill on Wednesday. President Donald Trump introduced Gorsuch during a prime time address. Elaine Chao has been sworn in as President Trump's transportation secretary. She was previously labor secretary under President George W. Bush. Construction equipment maker Caterpillar announced that it's moving its headquarters from Peoria in central Illinois to Chicago. The company says only a few hundred executives will be relocated. And tens of thousands protested in Romania after the government moved to decriminalize official misconduct. The change applies in cases where damages are a little less than $50,000. Protesters say it makes it harder to fight corruption. Sandy Kozell, The Associated Press, with AP News Minute. And in today's sports, New England Patriots quarterback Tom Brady opens up to the press in an emotional interview. While fighting tears back, Brady talks about the challenges his family has faced the past year. According to ESPN.com, Brady's mother, Galen, has been battling an illness, and Brady wasn't sure if his father would attend Super Bowl 51 due to the family circumstances. Brady's mom hasn't attended any games this season, while his father only attended one. And turning to the, co the college world of sports, for what's happening in the world of Tarleton Athletics this week, we send it over to Briar Gephardt. Briar? Thanks, Sydney. It's a week filled with doubleheaders here at Tarleton. Thursday will be a doubleheader for basketball and also a pink out. First, the women will take on Eastern New Mexico at 5.30, and then the men will take on Eastern New Mexico at 7.30. Friday, the baseball team will be facing Arlington Baptist at 1. Later at 4, the women's tennis team will play Howard Payne. Saturday, there will be two doubleheaders. At 1, the baseball team will take on Arlington Baptist. At 2.30, the women's basketball team will face Western New Mexico. Then at 4, the baseball team will play Arlington Baptist for the third time. Last but not least, the men's basketball team will go against Western New Mexico at 4. Get on out there and support your fellow Texans. Back to you. And today's weather is brought to you by weather.com. It is currently 73 degrees outside and the sun is shining. Today's high could reach the upper 70s, but that warmth won't last too long as temperatures will cool off to the high 30s by this evening. Today's broadcast was produced by Ethan Taylor, Rebecca Hernandez, Danny Hernandez, Alejandra Arguin, Marquise Daughtry, and Ariel Steele. Be sure to follow Texan News Service on Facebook and Twitter and check out our website at www.texannews.net. And tune in tomorrow from the latest news from the Tarleton State University campus in Stephenville, Texas. Have a great day, Texans.